Hi everybody, I'm Sarah. I'm the Real Simple Mama. Here are my girls. And in this exciting segment of my little collection of videos called Chili Chickens, and of course now comes a plane because of course, I wanted to talk specifically about using heaters in your coop in the winter. And if you haven't seen my other videos about prepping everything for winter, I do have a video called Winterizing Your Chicken Coop, which is basically, hey, the cold weather has come in for good for the season. What do I need to do? What do I need to expect as far as my girls taking care of my flock in that kind of weather? And that's applicable whether you have milder winters like I do because I'm in South Texas. Um, I know Rose is in Florida, you know, uh, but some of you guys, your winters are kind of insane. Um, so this same concept here will apply either way. And first, let me say that this video is mostly going to talk about the argument for should I use a heater in my chicken coop or not and why. But I will say... Um, I know that you're watching this video because you care about your chickens. You're not watching this video because you want to lose money, because you want harm to come to your flock, because you want, you know, to damage your property or anything like that. I know you're here because you love your birds. I know you're here because you have the best intentions. So please, this is as a little disclaimer, please don't be offended by anything that I say because I'm just trying to teach you and get my point across and why I have the opinion that I have. There's a little bee goes to get a drink why I have the opinion that I have on whether or not you should use heaters. And it's easy for me to say, again, I know because I have a milder winter, but let me teach you about the, you know, the physical changes that happens with, with that happen with chickens and how they tolerate winter. And then it'll help you make the best decision for your flock. And of course it also depends on, you know, are your chickens your livelihood? How many chickens do you have? How close are they to your house? You know, are they out in the wild all day? Are they just in a little run? Whatever the case may be. Okay. So, like I said, I have a more extensive video called Winterizing Your Chicken Coop, so you can just do a search up here in Winterize. I also have all my playlists, so you could go look at the chicken behavior and coop chores and all of that stuff. And then, of course, if you haven't seen the other video called Changes with Chili Chickens, then you can go and look at that. And that's more about what changes to expect with your birds. Not necessarily the chores you have to do, but just, hey, here's how your flock is going to behave differently because they're cold. So let's talk specifically about heaters. And I will just, as a spoiler alert, I will tell you, I am completely against using heaters um, in a chicken coop or if you've got turkeys or quail or pheasants or whatever the case may be, I am totally against using it. And there are some reasons why. So let's talk about why I feel that way. And then we'll just talk about some considerations. The number one problem is that there is an electrical slash fire hazard. And I said in my other video, there are people, even in just the San Antonio backyard chicken group, they're not a flock, we're not a flock, we're a Facebook group, <laughs> the Facebook flock. And <laughs> we have somebody in our group, in our numbers, who loses either their entire coop to a fire, like an electrical fire overnight or there's like a power surge or something weird happens. Or there was one person last year who was one of like the leaders and the gurus in our group who I guess her coop was close enough to her house that not only did the coop burn down, but it also caught her house on fire and she almost lost her entire house. That just to give your chickens some comfort. Um, and again, I'm, I'm not meaning to be insulting or looking down on anybody, but you know, she came on and showed us photos of the aftermath and basically said, I wish I had taken my own advice because it was totally not worth, of course, you know, me losing everything just so that my babies are a little bit warmer. Okay. So the number one hazard is there's an electrical fire, there's a short or something like that. But here's something you may not have thought of. The reason we're giving our chickens a heater, it's not really going to increase egg production. Remember that's done by the amount of hours of daylight that they have. So if you want more eggs throughout the shorter days, throughout the winter months, you've got to give them a light source, not a heat source. Okay. Just so you know. So the reason that you're giving them heat is so that they're more comfortable, so they're not cold. And here is that the um, the poison of the good intention, if you will, is that we feel like, okay, a human, we come outside and we're cold outside, so oh my God, our chickens must be freezing. And that's with the best intentions, right? I mean, you're being considerate. You feel cold, so you automatically want to go do something to, to help your girls to not be cold. I totally understand. Here's the problem, though. There's a couple of reasons why you don't want to give your chickens all of that heat. The first one is, um, if you're like me, you're really sensitive to temperature changes. And, you know, so I'm walking from my car into the store, 
right? And it's winter. And so it's really, really cold outside and I'm freezing, right? We're walking really fast so we can get into the store. And then what happens when you get into the store? They have the heat on full blast, right? And it gives you a headache and it makes you feel physically ill. It's not because they had the heat on per se. It's because it's such a drastic change. You're going from an extremely low temperature to an extremely high temperature and your body says, oh my gosh, like I, I can't handle that. It is much better for your chickens to be out in the cold. And I'm just going to make up some numbers here. For your chickens to be out in the cold, let's say we're freezing. We're 32 degrees Fahrenheit or we're zero degrees Celsius. We're freezing. It's much easier on their bodies, even though to us it seems like, oh, that sounds terrible. It's much easier for a chicken's body to go through slight temperature changes. Even if they come in and they go up to roost and go to bed and it's only 50 degrees inside. That is better for them than it is for them to be freezing outside you know literally at a freezing temperature outside and you come in and you've got it like at 70 or 80 degrees that's harder on their bodies now i don't know for sure if that shortens their lifespan or you know or anything like that but it certainly is much more difficult for them okay so it is easier for them to like gracie's doing crazy for them to puff themselves up eat more <clears throat> um sleep on their feet and do other strategies like that to stay warm then you're doing it for them and this leads into the other reason. So the reasons we've talked about so far where I don't like heaters. Number one is the electrical fire um, risk. Number two is that it's harder on their bodies. Even though you, th I, like, again, I, I know you guys love your birds. That's why you're here on YouTube listening to my ridiculous videos, right? Because you care. You love your chickens. And I know that you have good intentions. Look at Blue. What a cutie pie. Hey, Bluebird. <laughs> You have good intentions, you love your chickens, but it's not better for them to go from being really cold outside, which they can handle much better than we can, to coming in here and it's like super warm. That's actually harder on them, even though it sounds preferable, okay? And the third reason is because we always have good intentions and we always plan for our stuff to work. But, and again, I don't mean to sound dark, I don't mean to sound insulting, but we need to be real here. There is a possibility that, you know, you go out of town or you've already been in bed or you get sick and you can't go check on your chickens one day or somebody else is checking on your chickens or whatever and the heater doesn't come on. There's a power outage or you've got crazy ants that chewed through the electrical or you've got a squirrel that chewed through it or whatever. For whatever reason, you thought the heater came on on its timer and it didn't. So now you've got these birds who are actually, you've weakened them because they are, I'll use the word spoiled because they've been spoiled. They've been having a heater whenever they want. They can come in and come in at like 75, 80 degrees whenever they want to. Now something has happened. You know, something happened with electrical. You had a power outage. Maybe you're out of town. You don't even know that the heater didn't come on. You just assume that it's working, right? I mean, I'm guilty of doing that. Now you've got chickens who they don't remember how to be how to make themselves warm because you've been doing it for them. And I read an article the other day, and, and forgive me if you're the original source and, and you're like, hey, she's talking about my stuff. I don't remember where I read it because I follow so many chicken groups. I'm always reading chicken stuff on Pinterest, and that's pretty much the only reason I get on Facebook. Um, so they were talking about how one of two things will happen if your heat source fails and your chickens have been used to it because they're not doing the normal strategies. They haven't been eating more. They haven't been preening their feathers and practicing puffing up and doing all of those strategies. It's kind of like they forget how to chicken because they've got that handicap of the heater. Okay. If that makes sense. So now it's nighttime. The heater hasn't come on. Your chickens are really, really cold. One of two things is probably going to happen. A bird who either roosts on the ground or, you know, if it's one of those crazy wild birds and they end up roosting out in a tree, or if they roost up here by themselves, if they're not with the rest of the flock, they're probably going to freeze to death because they haven't been, <laughs> because they haven't been used to using their instincts and using their strategies. So you've essentially, you were trying to help. You loved your chickens. You were trying to keep them warm because I mean, you're cold. You don't want them to be cold, but now you've actually put them at a disadvantage and now they're in danger. The other thing that could happen, and this is especially bad if you have a larger flock, but the other thing that could happen is everybody says, oh my gosh, I'm cold. Now we're all going to pile onto each other, right? Because we're cold. The birds on the bottom are going to get asphyxiated. And that happened recently. I was reading about that on, like I said, that source that I can't remember. I want to say somebody copied it on our Facebook flock <laughs> to use that term again, but talking about, you know, it was another, basically like a, like a PSA, you know, like a, a service announcement of please, please, please don't use heaters because worst case scenario, you're going to have a fire or something. But even if it's working, okay, inevitably something's going to happen and you don't want to lose a couple of your birds, but Hey, at least they were toasty warm. So that's why I don't like using a heater. Let's talk about if you do want to use a heater or if you're still thinking about it, because that's totally fine. I, I want to give you the options and give you the information so you can do what's best for your flock. 
in the winterizing video, we talk about winterizing your coop is what the video is for. It's not really so much about your girls. It's kind of like the extra chores and the extra prep that you need to do to get your coop ready. One thing that's great about this coop that was built on this property before I moved in is all of the ventilation. Okay, so let's think about science for a minute. We've got a couple of different factors that you need to consider. The first one is that chickens poop when they sleep. So unless you come out and clean poop all throughout the middle of the night and every day during the day and et cetera, et cetera, there's going to be some poop that honestly is decomposing a little bit where they are, okay? Right under where they sleep, okay? So you've got a little bit of an ammonia breakdown going on, okay? The chickens are going to be warmer when they're inside at night and they've got their body heat and they want to sleep off the ground, okay? So they're up, the, heat, the warmer area of the coop is up off the ground, it's higher. Then you also have the factor of hot air rises, okay? So you need to have a lot of ventilation in your coop, not just on lower levels like this, but you need to have ventilation up towards the top because you need the hot air to go in, over, and out. So you need to think about if I was to have a heater, like if we're talking about my coop here, you know, this is where the poop falls. They sleep not on this bar, but they sleep on the higher bar. Where do I need to keep a heater? Okay. Well, hot air is going to rise. So if you put it up at the top, they're not even really going to feel it, right? Because the, the hot air is just going to go whoop and just go straight out. So there's no point in me having it up above their head. Okay. So you need to have a place that's very well ventilated, but it's safe from, you know, from water or from, oh man, Kelly is hard at work over there. You need to think about the best place to put a heater. You need to make sure that all of your cables and everything is wrapped up in electrical tape. You need to be checking it on the regular basis to make sure that, again, crazy ants, go look them up. They're crazy. They eat electrical. They're insane. They're crazy. Okay. Hence the name crazy ants. There are other rodents, and I use the term vermin, everything from possums to squirrels to mice who will gnaw at a cable. And it's kind of like once they figure out it's not food, they may stop. But if they've already eaten all of the rubber off of it, then that wire is now not safe. So you need to be doing regular rounds and checking on everything. The other thing I would recommend... Lacey's like, will you be quiet? Oh no, it's Flopsy. Sorry. You be quiet. I'm trying to lay an egg. The other thing you need to do, and I would recommend, whoop, as I go around the chain. Hey, Chi Chi. This funny little thing that I have in here, you may not have noticed it before. That is a thermometer. It's a wireless thermometer. And inside the house, I have a like a digital temperature gauge and it shows me, you know, weather information and it shows me the time and it's just one of those digital screens. I'll show you here in a minute. I'll go inside and, and give you a clip of it, but it has, you know, the indoor temperature, but then it also has this wireless thermometer that will read what the temperature is in that exact spot and wire it in. So inside I can see what the temperature is in that exact spot because that's right by where they sleep. Okay. So if you have a heater, I would suggest that, uh, first of all, that you're very actively watching it, checking on it, making sure that it's safe, that it's on, that it's the electrical is sound, and all of that is good to go. Take all the precautions. You also need to think about where you're going to put it. Thinking about hot air rising, and in that winterized video, I talk a lot about ventilation and insulation, because they're two different concepts, and you need to have a good balance of both in your chicken coop. All right? All right, Chichi? What's up, Callie? So, I hope that that info has been helpful. Um, I will say again that I guess one of the main points for me is just because you're cold, it doesn't mean that your chickens are cold. There are, you know, people have chickens over in the UK. They have chickens in other parts of the world that get way, 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 way colder than here. Um, and, you know, there are different breeds for different parts of the world based on, you know, the climate and things like that. But just because you're cold, it doesn't mean your chickens need to come inside. It doesn't mean they need to be in 80 degrees. And I love my animals and I have a tendency to personify my animals. So, you know, but you need to keep in mind, okay, they are very well adapted to deal with the cold. I just need to make sure that I have a safe place for them. Um, you know, referencing my other, the changes with chili chickens video, you just need to make sure that they have a place where, I mean, they can still be cold, but where they can get dry. For example, if where you are, there's a lot of, you have a very wet winter, you have a lot of, of, um, sleet or rain or snow, you know, they can stand out in it with their feet and, you know, the down on the underbelly of their, their body and stuff can get a little bit wet. That's fine. But if they say, okay, I tap out, I'm done, you know, I'm too 
like this is too wet and too cold. They need to have an area where they can come and they can get dry. It doesn't have to be 80 degrees. It doesn't have to be a spa or a sauna or anything like that. Just something where they can get out of the wind and out of the wet. And so, you know, depending on how the wind is going to be blowing here in this area, I may get, you know, get shower curtains, get tarps. I mean, and you can even have it pre-measured for the space and like permanently mounted up along the top. And then during the spring and summer, when you don't need it, just roll them up and use like bungee cords or something. And so that way the material is already there. You know, you just store it up on top, like on the rafters, essentially. But, you know, we love our chickens. We want to do what's best for the chickens. And, you know, if you end up deciding, you know, hey, Sarah, I decided, you know, I watched your video. Thanks for the information. I'm going to get a heater anyway for peace of mind. Or if you have silkies or if you have, you know, lots of chicks, there are still, you know, broody hens and mama hens will lay the chicks all year round because the roosters try to mate them and, you know, and breed all year round. So you may have chicks being born right now and that's okay. So you just do what you need to do. But I do want you to be very, very conscientious of what the deal is with the heaters because they scare the crap out of me, to be honest. And, you know, I, I hate saying it. I hate somebody being a statistic. But every single year in the backyard chicken group in San Antonio, somebody, at least one person has everything burned down because of a heater malfunction. And, you know, even if the heater is sound, even if it didn't get wet, I mean, something goes wrong. And so I just need you to be really vigilant and really weigh the pros and the cons. Do I really have to keep the heat on for my birds? It's not going to make them live longer. It's not going to make them lay more eggs. Um, you know, if you've got babies or if you've got a breed to where they need to have that happen, then certainly. But if you are just like me and you've just got regular chickens who have the regular waterproof feathers. And... You know, you think that it will make their lives better if they're just as warm as you are in your snuggly little bed. Think again. Okay. So um, I welcome questions, comments, suggestions. Let me know, especially those of you guys who are further up north. You know, Nikki, Kathleen, I mean, Dean is in the UK. Good grief. Um, I know some of us like Rich and Rose and I, I mean, we're in the southern U.S. So, I mean, we get cold, but our concept of cold is totally different. So um, let me know what you guys do, what questions you have. Um, those of you who do have and use heaters, if you've got one that you recommend, let us know for sure. From my, from what I understand, there was not a particular like a heater that is specifically designed for outdoor chicken coop use. So I would I would assume that it is some kind of space heater. Um, but you know, just let us know if you use something, what works, how long you've used it, what parameters you've got. It certainly doesn't need to be on all day and night. You know, there's all kinds of specifications that you can start to get into. But that is just my fear and my mourning. Um, with using heaters and what you can do instead. So again, check out the changes with chili chickens video. Check out the winterizing video that gives you an idea of all just the seasonal changes and chores and considerations. And especially think about, again, ventilation, which is where you've got to get the hot air and the ammonia air out, up and out, but also having a good balance of insulation for your girls too. Right, Calypso? So here's me real quick with the humidity and everything of this little forecast station. So it's 78.6 degrees in the coop right now. The sensor signal is good. You can get all different kinds of things like this to where you can be inside and know what it feels like outside. But my kids are screaming and there's people outside working on their yard. So I'm going to cut this video, but I'm Sarah, the real simple mama. Let me know in the comments how I can help, what questions you have, and let's keep our chickens warm.